what is the world made of? In trying to answer that question, philosophers and scientists for thousands of years have been considering everything from the smallest particles in the universe to cataclysmic events happening billions of miles away. This is where the commonest elements are created in stars, like our sun. Stars are made largely of hydrogen, but when hydrogen atoms are superheated, they fuse together to make heavier elements, from helium up to elements as heavy as iron. Stars are like ovens. The longer you cook the elements of a star, the more elements you make. But our sun is not hot enough. It doesn't have enough energy to combine elements to create elements beyond iron. However, our bodies, of course, are made out of elements like cobalt and nickel that are beyond iron. So we had a paradox. Where do we have enough energy, raw energy, to create the elements beyond iron? And the answer is supernovae. When stars explode, trillions of degrees are attained. Temperature is so hot that you can slam iron and different elements together to create uranium, to create plutonium, and all the other elements of the periodic chart. So when you look at your body, when you look at the elements around yourself, just realize that we are made out of stardust. We came from the stars. It took centuries to discover those elements and sort them into a neat periodic table. But people have always been fascinated by what the world around them was made of. Sitting here on the beach, gazing into the fire, takes me straight back more than 2,000 years to ancient Sicily and a chap called Empedocles who sat and gazed into his fire and thought about the world and came to the conclusion it was made of just four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. He could see them all there in the fire. A piece of green wood going on, dribbled sap. It was obviously the water trying to get back to its natural home, the sea. He could see the smoke rising up to its natural home, the air, the flames rising up to their natural home, the fire of the sun, and of course the ash became part of the earth. The whole thing was made of just the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Today, we see things differently. Pure water consists of two chemical elements, hydrogen and oxygen. If we analyze Earth, we find that it contains dozens of elements. But centuries ago, people had already isolated some of the elements we recognize today. They smelted metals like lead, copper, iron, and tin, using charcoal, a form of carbon, to fuel their fires and they were particularly fascinated by gold. Early scientists spent 2,000 years trying to make this precious element from less valuable materials. More like wizards than true scientists, they were known as the alchemists. Mix the yolk of eggs with the grindings of their shells. Pour the mixture into a sealed container and burn for 41 days. Boil the residue with water. Then put the solution into a container and cook for two more days. Empty the contents onto a conch shell, smooth them out and expose to the sun. The water will thicken into a soapy substance. Melt one ounce of silver, add it to the mixture, and you will have gold. This recipe comes from Zosimos of Panopolis, who lived in Alexandria about AD 300. Another alchemist suggested feeding particles of gold leaf to chickens in the hope that they'd lay golden eggs. Of course, these recipes didn't work. You can't make gold like that. Nevertheless, they kept Zosimos and his fellow alchemists busy for a very long time. But some alchemists did make some real discoveries while conducting some seriously weird experiments. In 1669, a German called Hennig Brandt began experimenting with urine. Now, alchemists loved urine. They called it the golden stream, and they loved it because it was the right sort of colour, although not the right sort of smell. Anyway, Brandt collected 50 buckets of this stuff. 
He stored it until all the liquid had evaporated and all that was left was some sludge and a lot of wriggling worms. Oh. That was not all. He then boiled the stuff up and allowed it to ferment till it turned black. He added some sand and heated the whole lot up in a retort. Fumes started to appear in the glass. And then something very strange came to pass. He had in his flask this wonderful, mysterious substance that glowed in the dark. Before his eyes, it flickered and flamed. He thought it would go out, but it went on and on. What he'd actually discovered was phosphorus. He didn't know it was an element. In fact, he had no idea what an element was. He called it cold fire. A contemporary of that alchemist was an Irishman called Robert Boyle. He dabbled in alchemy himself, but he was much more scientific because he based his conclusions on experiments and not just on mumbo jumbo. It was Robert Boyle who defined an element. He said that elements can combine together to form compounds but they cannot be separated into simpler substances. Now, I've got some elements here. This is silicon. These are metals. This is bismuth, beautiful cubic crystals. Here we've got sulfur. It usually comes as powder, and this has been compressed into a rod. But here are some beautiful crystals, natural crystals of sulfur. This is iodine. You may be able to see the pale mo vapor and lovely lovely purple crystals up here on the wall of the glass this is bromine another of the halogens you see it's got liquid in the bottom and vapor above deep brown very heavy liquid and this is chlorine a greenish yellow gas very poisonous and unpleasant so back in the 17th century, when Boyle was working, they had very few elements at their disposal. It wasn't really till the beginning of the 19th century, the early 1800s, that they could lay their hands on a whole lot more. And quite a lot of those were the result of their having at their disposal a new and powerful tool, electricity. By passing a strong current through caustic soda, Humphrey Davy first extracted sodium in 1807. It was hazardous work. When we reconstructed his experiment with modern equipment, the voltage regulator blew up. <laughs> well, <laughs> Humphrey Davy, in fact, prepared four new elements using electrolysis. First, potassium and sodium, and then he went on to make barium and strontium by essentially the same method. 19th century scientists found out everything they could about elements and their compounds. They knew that some chemical reactions were activated by catalysts. For each element, they recorded the melting point, the boiling point, how it reacted with other elements. They calculated the atomic weight, which we now call atomic mass. They knew that elements had electrical properties that encouraged them to combine. Sodium burns in chlorine with an orange glow to make salt, which is that white, smoky stuff. After centuries of struggling in the dark, they had a mass of data, but it was confusing, and inquisitive scientists began to wonder whether there was a pattern in all these findings. 